Hello game developers, designers, and cool kids in general, welcome back. I have a very exciting uh, announcement to make that I'm not going to make. This is me announcing the announcement. I'm going to do another video where I make the announcement, but this video isn't This isn't the announcement. But it's going to be really cool, so I'm telling you about it, so you can look forward to the announcement where I announce the cool thing. You see? You see what, what I did? Basically, I'm going to do like a, a live stream thing over a couple of weeks. I'm going to make a cool game. I'm going to give you all the source code, and you can watch, and I'll upload it all to YouTube, and it's going to be really, really cool. But I'll talk about it in detail, and more of what's going on with that, and how awesome and cool and exciting it's going to be in the video I do either today or tomorrow where I talk about how cool and exciting and awesome that's going to be. But in the meanwhile, this video today, what we're going to be looking at is how to localize a game, or rather how I specifically localized my game, Another Perspective. That's this game you're probably looking at right now. Um, I was going through like my Patreon tutorial spreadsheets. I've not, not had a lot of time this week, unfortunately. But I saw this topic, and I didn't have a lot of votes, but I was like, oh, I can, I can do that. That's pretty straightforward. And also, I think it'll just help a lot of people, so I can get this one out of the way pretty quickly. And uh, it's a cool one to talk about, because I also get to plug my game at the same time. So that's pretty cool too. So this is uh, another perspective. Um, you might not have seen it like this. It's in debug mode and it's got like the little debugger thing going on in the top corner there where I see all the FPS and I have all my cheaty commands to send myself throughout the game. Um, a thing I did in another perspective because a few people were asking and offering to do things like fan translations and stuff is uh, I added a few languages. So you can see all the text in English and you can see it in Italian, and you can see it in Spanish, and you can also now see it in French. So there's a few extra languages added into the game. Now, basically I'm just going to talk a little bit today about how I did that, technically speaking, and some of the problems you might run into when wanting to localize your game, and uh, just general things for you to think about in terms of the methods you might use to go about solving that particular problem if you want people to be able to read your game in their language. So with another perspective, like the text is all shown to the screen via things like if I come out of the game and go to say, I don't know, just some random room, like uh, some room with some actual text and it would help, like this. There's a little object here called obj underscore, well, okay, no, that's called text on because I have a bunch of different text objects. Um, and those text objects, basically they have the text that they want to display that like comes up in the that I just add during in the creation code of the specific instance that I drop into the room. So I plunk the object in the room, then I edit the creation code, where I add in the actual string of text that I want to show to the screen. And then the object does a bunch of fancy things because sometimes I want to only show the text when um, I only want to show the text when the player has gotten all the keys or touched a certain point in the room or something like that in order to control pacing and all those other kinds of little things. Um, so that's how it works. Um, when I came to came around to wanting to localize it, basically what I did is I used an any file, and I've talked about this before. I have a video on that. You can check that out on using any files to save and load different kinds of data. But I have an any file called language.any, um, where basically I have every single string in the game under a, a section called English, and they all have numbers. Um, there's about I don't know, there's something like it's not a very long game. There's like 300 or something lines of text. Or something like that in the game and they're all in this any file under English and then when I want to do a translation um, I add a new section for, with a different language name so because we can see down here I have Italian and I have those exact same numbers that match up to each specific line equaling their new lines of text okay um, and yeah that's more or less how that works so what I then do is I have a script called, uh, where is it, str underscore string, where basically I pass the number of the string that I want to get for a specific block of text, and I go into the any file, and I find the string under that number in the section based on whatever language I have set on a, a global variable, which is global.language, which I can change in the options by just you know, cycling global.language, just a variable. It goes between 0 and 3, and then 0 is English, 1 is Italian, 2 is Spanish, and 3 is French, right? So it just finds the appropriate section, and then just finds the appropriate string from that section, okay? So then, instead of writing in the creation code, text equals, and then a long English string of text, which is what I did when I, the game was only in English, I just replace that with text equals ser underscore string, and then the ID of the 
string than it needs to be. I leave those blocks of text in there and I've left them all in throughout the game just so that um, just so that I can see when I'm looking through the game what each string was kind of thing and I can remember it in English rather than just looking at a number um, because then it, the line of code doesn't necessarily do anything there. I could just make that a comment if I wanted it would basically be the same thing uh, because it just gets overwritten immediately anyway. But I just like added that line on top of them and just left the other lines in as essentially comments. Okay. Now, one of the major problems that I ran into with this method, I mean, this method works perfectly well, and like, say, like, the text is there, and then I change the global variable, and then it shows the, the different text, okay? I mean, at the moment I'm in, in French mode, and like, if I just use my debug commands and change the language, you can see how it's changing. I have to reset the room each time for it to kick in, but that's just through various other meta things of how my game is put together. So you can see that it works. Now, one of the biggest problems I ran into, just because of the way my game specifically is designed, and I'm just about to, I'm not only talking about this now just to sort of highlight issues you may have trying to do the same sort of thing with your game, is that uh, because all my text is kind of on the screen like this, um, and it was kind of important for me specifically and for my game to um, uh, have all the text in like aesthetically nice looking spaces and to like not leak into the walls and so on. I ran into a lot of problems where I had really carefully crafted an English sentence so that it fitted into a specific space, but then obviously different languages have different lengths of words and then that, that ruined all of it and like the, the French version or the Italian version would like stretch into the walls or it would just like be, even sometimes be too short and would just kind of look silly. And I would have to do a lot of playing around with like uh, like adding line breaks and stuff and moving around and ha having like the people who translated it for me like reduce the lengths of certain lines and things like that and uh, it was a lot of work and I think honestly there's not a lot of ways of avoiding that work so uh, depending on how you show your text but it's something to be aware of like if you're building something that's showing text in a certain way uh, thinking about how you're gonna dynamically accommodate text of different length you know because um, you run into a lot of problems when you have a situation like my game, where you have very specific, like, small spaces. Like, if I just kind of walk through the game, you can kind of see these, like, different size spaces, like this one as well, specifically. These different size spaces, like, how do you make the, the text fit? Uh, one extra little solution I had to make it dynamically a little bit easier on me was whenever you're using a language that's not English, because everything was perfectly crafted for English, right? Um, is that I just reduced the size of the font by a bit. Didn't solve all my problems, but it actually solved a good 70% of them. Like, the text just managed to fit really, really nicely um, just by reducing the, the size of the font. And that's why I see when I change language, you see the font just gets a bit smaller like that because it's just like, I think, like 25% smaller or something like that. And yeah, I just kind of made the text a bit smaller and that helped out a lot. But as you can probably tell, I mean, I think that one's even like three lines as opposed to, opposed to two there. Um, and I had to do a lot of working with the uh, the different translators to get everything to actually fit correctly. So that's just something you might want to bear in mind as you go about localizing your game. But that's the method that I used. Um, the any file itself is an included file. I don't think I've ever really talked about these in Game Maker before. You have this section on the bottom called included files. You can create an included file, and you can pick a file, and it will bundle it along with your game when, like, um, you create like the installer, or if you create the exe, it, I think it embeds the actual file into the executable itself, so that it always has access to it, and it's like always in the memory. Um, so that's what I did for that. Include files just lets you like send files along, so you know that you're always gonna like have access to them or whatever, and that's how you like include files in like the. The, the file structure of a game when you like run the installer and stuff like that. Anything you want to install with the installer that's built into Game Maker alongside just the executable and stuff like that, you got to include in the included files. Unless it's something you're dynamically creating at runtime, like save files and stuff like that, obviously. But yeah, I just wanted to touch on included files because I don't think I've ever included those before. And yeah, that's more or less how I uh, localized another perspective. Um, I will actually pop up this script, this scr underscore string, to like a paste bin or something, and I'll kind of comment on it a little bit and pop that in the description for you guys, so you can kind of just get the idea of how it works, but I think it's fairly straightforward. 
And you'd be like, oh, okay, so this is how you would read an any file and get the different things. Okay, fair enough. But uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful for you guys. Uh, again, a cool, exciting announcement coming soon. Um, various other stuff coming, a lot of stuff coming soon. Uh, <laughs> as seems to always be the case. But yeah, exciting announcement video will be either today or tomorrow. Probably tomorrow, I'm not sure. But it'll be exciting. So look out for that, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you, dudes.